the guy that everybody wants as we go to Chris's mock draft here in the top 10. How about Caleb Williams and Chris? I got I to gotta ask you off the rip here. There's been a lot of people that are assuming Caleb Williams is going to be the number one pick in the draft, and for good reason, the former Heisman Trophy winner. We've seen him getting done under Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma and USC. Is there a conversation to be had if you are the Chicago Bears about parting ways with Justin Fields? I know you have that on your mock draft. And maybe looking at a guy like Jaden Daniels or Drake May, or do you think he's got this one sewn up? I think Caleb Williams has this sewn up. Now, that's not to say, and this is kind of going off what Smoke was just mentioning, that they should maybe look into some trades and see and let other teams know that their phone is available to be called over the next couple months. And and if a trade offer from, say, the commanders at number two with the Cliff Kingsbury connection or a bunch of other teams that may not be super enamored with this free agent quarterback class, if they want to offer a King's ransom to move to number one, I don't think that would be the worst idea for the Chicago Bears. I have Drake May at number two um, in my quarterback rankings. I think it's relatively close, but in terms of just being pro ready for what teams want at the quarterback today, the improvisation ability, the spatial awareness, you just mentioned Patrick Mahomes, uh, that he's so good in, in that regard. That's where Caleb Williams thrives too. And I think he's got a great arm, the accuracy. We've seen it over those, you know, multiple seasons at Oklahoma and USC. So I think he is the safest quarterback that can translate right away. And that's why the Bears probably will and should pick him at number one overall. The beauty behind this whole trade thing is everyone's playing poker right now. No one wants to give up what they want to do at this point. So there's, it might be, we might trade, we might not. But in the grand scheme of things, the Chicago Bears need to just go up, run this draft pick up there, and hand the card in and say, we're taking Caleb Williams. And listen now for the trade for Justin Fields. Because now you can get a little bit more to help your team out. But what that organization needs, they, need they need some Red Bull in there. They need a, just a fusion of a guy that gives you a chance to now compete for a Super Bowl. Justin Fields is showing you that you can win a few games here or there, but you need a franchise guy. And Caleb Williams, to what we've seen in college, is that franchise-level quarterback. Chris, if, if Caleb Williams is the guy at number one, I wonder, if you're a Bears fan, what can you expect from Ryan Poles to possibly fetch back for a guy like Justin Fields? Probably multiple day two picks. We've seen guys like Carson Wentz and Jimmy Garoppolo go in that range. Um, and the fact that Justin Fields played a lot better down the stretch, despite mostly being inconsistent in Chicago, that probably boosts his trade value a little bit. And because he's been injured, I could see there being some type of performance base, like he needs to play 75% of the snaps for a third rounder to move to a second rounder. So I don't think they're going to get that first round pick that's obviously very coveted, but like a third rounder and then a conditional third that could become a second if he hits a certain benchmark statistically or plays, again, a a certain amount of snaps percentage-wise. That's kind of what it feels like the range would be on the trade market for Justin Fields. All eyes on Chicago. We mentioned the draft two months away. And uh, Ryan Poles, big decision for him, the young general manager there with the Bears. Now, going to number two with the Commanders, here's what's pretty interesting, Chris. You talked about your number two prospect being Drake May. But in this mock draft, you like the Commanders' new head coach, Dan Quinn, going with the Heisman Trophy winner and Jaden Daniels. Why'd you go with Daniels over May in this situation? All right, there's two reasons here. First off, there's kind of been some rumors two weeks out here from the combine that Drake May could be the quarterback who slips a little bit and like Smoke was saying you know there's a lot of teams playing poker right now or is is there a team that's closer to the back portion of the top 10 that just wants Drake May to fall to them that is very likely they could be pushing that rumor Um, and also I think with Cliff Kingsbury there in the nation's capital he just was an offensive coordinator or part of that offense it at USC with Caleb Williams, the, all the athleticism that he had. If he can't get Caleb Williams, to me, the dynamic athleticism, the scrambling ability, the, the off-script stuff that certainly Drake May has, you definitely get more of that with Jaden Daniels, and I think Cliff Kingsbury would gravitate toward him at number two um, more so than Drake May. Being from the DMV area, Jaden Daniels fits in perfect. Doug Williams, Robert Griffin III. D.C. needs a Jaden Daniels type of quarterback that gives you that electric playmaking ability, off-script plays. The city needs that. A guy that comes in and just be captain quarterback, I don't know if that would work for for D.C. right now. But the skill set says it. 
His ability is, is just... Cliff Kingsbury can do so much with this young man in terms, of the, in terms of the run game. And Anthony Lynn being the run game coordinator and working with A. Lynn back in 2017 with the Buffalo Bills, he has a lot of quarterback runs that he can design for Jaden Daniels. Interesting dynamic, Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, you think about it, who he's worked with. You go back to guys like Kyler Murray. You go back to guys like uh, Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, Caleb Williams, an analyst at USC. He spent some time with him this past year. So we'll see what happens with Jaden Daniels. The legs, you can't underestimate the legs. Big part of the reason why LSU has been so successful offensively and number one offense in the country this past year. 